Well, hello and welcome to the Greensboro Electric Bus Dedication Ceremony. The first deployment of electric buses in the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. My name is Adam Fisher and I'm the Director of Transportation for the City of Greensboro and I will be your MC for this great event. For the next 30 minutes we're going to hear from this panel of distinguished guests uh, to celebrate this uh, special occasion. And then at 12.15, we're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. And following the ribbon cutting ceremony at 12.30, everybody's invited to go on an inaugural ride uh, on an electric bus. So everybody's invited to jump on these two buses and we're going to take a little trip um, to see how, they, see how they work. I believe they're going to start up. Uh, I think we, we went through all the tests. And, yeah, they, uh, they're good. They've been tested. We've actually, we've actually had them on the road for a couple weeks now. They're working great, just as, just as advertised. What an exciting day in Greensboro, North Carolina. As Adam said briefly, and you'll hear a lot more about this, uh, it's a good day in Greensboro. It's generally a good day in Greensboro, but this is a really good day because we lead the state and we lead the country in many respects. We don't brag enough about what we do, but we're going to brag today about us leading the way for the state with electric buses. We're honored to have some, you're going to hear some information about how we're, we're leading the way in the country too in this area. We have a phenomenal transit system uh, led by our staff that's here, our board, our council. Uh, thank you for being here to support this and supporting our transit system ongoing, not just on today when we talk about some buses, but riding the bus, supporting the bus system. Uh, and again, thank you for being a part of this community uh, as we grow together and we lead the way. My job is easy. My job is to say welcome and to be brief and get out of the way of everybody else who's gonna be, uh, who's gonna be speaking. So again, thank you on behalf of the city staff and city council. My name is David Parrish. Thank you for being here. This is, um, this is a really big deal. Uh, as a company, we're working with uh, around 100 transit agencies right now. In 2018, we deployed 25 fleets like this throughout the United States. And in spite of that experience and the pace that we're introducing this technology into the market, what you're doing here today is really taking a leadership position. The U.S. Southeast is one of the fastest growing, fastest urbanizing regions in the country. From an automotive manufacturing perspective, this is the place you want to be in the United States if you're scaling operations. These buses were manufactured in Greenville, South Carolina. so. I, I didn't have to fly from California to get here today. I just drove up from our facility last night uh, in Greenville, South Carolina. So the, the, the buses you see here today in front of you were built by your partners in South Carolina. The battery technology that goes into these buses, which has an energy density or a technology level that rivals what's in a Tesla, those were designed and manufactured in California. The composite bus bodies, these, these buses, one thing is that enables them to be an electric bus and to travel so far in a single charge. The body of the bus weighs 4,000 pounds less than a traditional steel bus. So these are carbon fiber and composite, and these were built in Rhode Island and Iowa by one of the largest American manufacturers of wind turbine technology. So the charging stations that we're deploying, they were, part of them were built in Michigan and part were built in California. Um, and most importantly, all of our employees, we're, we're not a massive company, we're about 500 people, but our team is headquartered, located in the, United, in the United States, and approximately two thirds of our suppliers are US suppliers. So one of the themes you'll pick up from is these are all American electric buses. And we should be very proud of that. This is absolutely the future. If you look at bus fleets around the world, the biggest cities around the world are working to eliminate tailpipe emissions from their cities for public health reasons. And they're also working on diversifying their sources of fuel. When the price of fuel goes up, the members of your community who depend on cars to get to work, they become more reliant on mass transit. So it really doesn't make any sense to run exactly the same fuel in our public transit system as we do currently in our cars. So you're making a big step. You're basically reducing your exposure to fuel price risk by about 20% with just this deployment. Uh, we were going over the numbers this morning, and it kind of snuck up on us by this fall, because this is the first deployment we're doing with Greensboro, but there, there are more buses coming. By this fall, you will have the second largest battery electric bus fleet on the East Coast of the United States. Oh, wow. 
So, so you're, you're second only to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia, I think, runs a fleet of close to 2,000 buses. So you should be incredibly proud as to the le leadership position you're taking. And it's possible that you could actually squeak past uh, Philly. So, um, and, and we are excited to be a part of that because we learn on every deployment that we execute. And because you're our neighbors, it's really easy for us to see what's going well with the electric bus deployment and what we need to improve upon. And this technology, you're looking at the buses here, but electric buses, it's half is about the vehicle and half is about the charging technology, how we interact with the grid. So it, it's incredibly exciting for us to have such a large deployment that's so close to where we're based and a lot of our suppliers are based as well. So um, just a couple more notes about the, the, oh, the, the other one I should have mentioned, the motor, the electric motor that's in this vehicle, which it's, uh, motor's about this big. It replaces a 2,000 pound diesel engine. That motor technology was designed and manufactured in Colorado. So we don't have to be a follower when it comes to next generation energy technology. We read a lot about how fast China's moving into solar and wind and electric vehicles. We can develop that technology in the U.S. We can repower a lot of our fleets. We can upgrade to more advanced technology, and we can do it while creating jobs within our country. Uh, so that's a big piece of why we do what we do. I, I do want to extend my thanks to Duke Energy for helping us with the infrastructure. In our experience, the best electric bus deployments are really a three-way partnership between the transit system, the bus manufacturer, and the local energy company. So we, we, um, we appreciate that Duke has been involved from the very beginning. That's really a best practice. Uh, don't be surprised about the level of attention that this deployment you will get. You'll have people who want to come visit your system from Asia and from Europe because mayors throughout the world are trying to figure out this, this question. How do I provide transportation without pollution? Um, in, Adam touched on the savings. I look at it on a per vehicle basis. So if these were diesel buses, one, we, we couldn't run them in here. That would, be, uh, that would not be good for our health. So these, these buses are on right now, and you wouldn't know it. They're quiet. There are no emissions. Um, these replace 40-foot diesel buses, and in, on average in the U.S., a 40-foot transit bus gets about 3.5 miles per gallon on diesel, and they run about 36,000 miles per year per bus. So the simple math on that is every diesel bus that you see driving by is 10,000 gallons of diesel per year for 12 years. These buses are achieving roughly 20 miles per gallon energy efficiency when you convert fuel to electricity. And so what we look at it, every one of these that you deploy, you're taking 10,000 gallons of demand off the system per bus per year. And if you think about that on a lifetime basis, 120,000 gallons of diesel that you don't need to buy. Um, so on a, on a fuel economy perspective, you're quadrupling the, the fuel economy. Imagine if we could do that with our cars if you could go from 20 miles per gallon to 80 miles per gallon. That's what you're doing with this technology. So this is absolutely state of the art. These are the best electric buses in the world. And we're incredibly proud of the fact that it's a US company working with US transit agencies. Um, touched on the resiliency piece. Um, also just want to touch on the fact that the, the fact that you're, you're you're leading with a deployment where 20% of the fleet is the GTA fleet is a large bus fleet. It's one of the largest bus fleets um, in the Southeast. And the team here decided not to just do one bus and to play with the technology. They are putting in a, a significant chunk of their fleet right out of the gate as electric. Um, that requires a lot of changes in behavior, changes in training. These are better than diesel buses. We're, we're biased, but we, they are much more advanced technology, but they're different. So I hope everyone here can remember the, the spirit of the excitement, the innovation. North Carolina has always been, been known for innovation and being the first. Um, but carry that attitude forward. We're in a partnership now for 12 years. These bus bodies we actually think will last 18 years because they don't rust. Um, there will be new technology that comes out. The battery technology is going to evolve. The charging technology is going to evolve. But especially the GTA board, I, I really appreciate the fact that you've supported management. They are taking a risk that 90% of transit agencies in the United States are not yet taking. So you're in the first 10% of fleets in the United States to figure out how electric bus technology is going to operate in your system. And so um, it very much is a partnership. Um, we will learn, but we, we want to keep that innovative spirit throughout this deployment. Um, we, and we'll, we'll be with you the entire way. A lot of what we're going to do is just work on training drivers and maintenance personnel. Um, 
There's new stuff with electric buses. There's charging stations now. So, um, but we want to keep the spirit that we have today and, um, and work with you to transition the entire fleet. So it is a big step that 20% of your fleet is now electric. I look forward to celebrating a couple years down the road when that last diesel bus comes off the road and you're one of the largest fully electric fleets in North America. Adam, I really want to thank you and your staff for doing the research and really bringing forth why we should make this investment. Um, so we're going to have 10 buses pretty soon and another six by the end of the year. So to have 16 electric bus buses on our streets by the end of the year really is a big deal to be the first in the southeast and to be the first ribbon cutting for the governor. It'll be something that you'll always remember. So this, this really is a, a very exciting day. Um, and it really shows the city's commitment to sustainability, that truly we want to do our complete staff. And we have to thank our partners in Duke Energy for allowing us to move forward with this project in a more expedient manner. Thank you. So we are excited to roll out the buses. And I think not only are we doing this for sustainability, but it's also going to be a better rider experience, that we think that the riders are going to enjoy the electric buses much more than the old diesel buses. So we know that we're going to hear much better feedback over the coming months, that it is going to be a better experience all the way around. You know, we made a commitment to sustainability when we, be, when we built the maintenance facility, that we had a LEED gold standard building here. Um, so when it comes to transportation, sustainability really is important all the way around. So um, I'm very excited about this. I'm excited that Greensboro really is showing a leadership position when it comes to transportation across the country. So this is an exciting day, and um, it is my pleasure to introduce Mike Fox, who is the chair of the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Thank you, Mayor Vaughn, and uh, good afternoon to everyone, and, and welcome here. Um, you know, the, the thing that I really want to emphasize here today is uh, partnerships and good government, you know, public service is really a team sport. And none of this would be happening without uh, a lot of partners, and we at NCDOT are proud to be a part of that partnership. Uh, we've got you know, a partnership with Greensboro, the city of Greensboro, and GTA, our uh, public transit division uh, works regularly with them. Uh, we were fortunate that we were able to steal Hannah Cochran uh, from Greensboro and uh, bring her to Raleigh to help us. So, Greensboro's loss is North Carolina's gain. Uh, we also uh, have our federal partners. Congressman Walker, thank you for your help. Senator Burr's help. Um, we obviously uh, use a lot of federal dollars uh, to be able to run these programs. And so, you know, that's critically important. And the GTA board, thank you for your service. Um, at NCDOT, we believe in transit. And uh, I think a great example of, of that was our innovative use during Hurricane Florence to use transit to evacuate people in the uh, in the stricken areas who otherwise might not have had a way to get out and uh, we've been recognized nationally for doing that and so uh, we believe that it is a great program and what the city of Greensboro is doing here with uh, you know, advancing the green technology is truly remarkable and we hope that we're not only a leader here in Greensboro for the, the, the nation in the southeast, but for other, you know, towns and cities and counties in North Carolina. So with that, you know, thank you very much. I want to thank Governor Cooper for giving me the opportunity to serve on this board and, and to lead this board. It is uh, a privilege and an honor, and uh, I'm glad to be able to do something here in Greensboro uh, in my hometown. So thank you for that, Governor. With that, uh, my next task is to introduce Governor Cooper. Uh, he is a lifelong North Carolinian, grew up in Nash County, uh, worked uh, summers on the family farm, went to public schools uh, his entire life. His mother was a public school teacher. Um, 
attended uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, both for his undergraduate degree and his law degree, and uh, has many, many years in public service, uh, served in our state legislature, uh, served many years as the Attorney General, and Governor Cooper is committed to making the lives of North Carolinians better. Uh, and in, in my particular area in transportation, we've always had his full support in making sure that as the North Carolina Department of Transportation, we're able to deliver the transportation solutions that communities need. And each community is different. And so uh, Governor Cooper has encouraged us you know, to, to work with communities, find out how we can help them and provide those transportation solutions to them. Um, Governor Cooper has had a, a goal ever since he's been in office that every day he wants to, North Carolinians, he wants to work to make North Carolinians you know, better educated, healthier, and have a, a more money in their pockets and make the economy better. And uh, at, when in transportation, it's easy for us to help Governor Cooper with that goal because most people use some sort of transportation to get to their jobs, to get to their health care, to get to education, and to do all the other things that they enjoy doing. So we're really uh, uh, lucky that we have such a supportive governor for what we do. And with that, I'd like to ask you to help me welcome the 75th governor of North Carolina, Governor Roy Cooper. Thank you, Mike. It's so great when all of our people are saying our mission statement for me. I appreciate that. A North Carolina where people are better educated, where they're healthier, where they have more money in their pockets, and they have opportunities to live more abundant and purposeful lives. Mike, thank you for agreeing to serve as chairman of the State Board of Transportation. He knows how important it is that our entire state be connected. But let me tell you, folks, you know where he lives when he talks to you. <laughs> And I have so many friends here in Greensboro, so many friends out there have been very close to this community for years. I'm excited about what's happening in the triad. I believe great, even greater days are ahead. Uh, Mayor Vaughn, thank you for your service. Representative Ashton Clemens, thank you for being here. Councilwoman Sharon Hightower and all the other local government officials and employees. Congressman Walker, thank you for, for being here. Uh, and I have Kevin Monroe, who is my Deputy Director of Intergovernmental Affairs, who is, who is back there. It's been said before, but this is a big deal, and it is a big day. Not only for the city of Greensboro, but for the entire state of North Carolina. You know, over a century ago, Greensboro became known as the Gate City. This is a place where dozens of trains pass through each day before moving on to other destinations across the state. And over the years, strong transportation and interconnectivity helped local businesses and families to thrive here. And I am proud to add a new addition to that legacy today. Once again, City of Greensboro is serving as a gateway for North Carolina. This time with a new future of cleaner and healthier transportation. It is amazing to be the first city in North Carolina to use battery electric rechargeable buses in public transportation. Let me just say, I just got on this bus and walked on it and I thought about, wow, if I could just remove that back row of three or four rows of seats and put me a little workplace back there, I could drive all over the state in that thing. Oh, Ryan, now I'm going to get a salesman coming to the office. As long as we don't have to make the change before. I, 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 I see. We'll lease it to you. Well, you know, when you talk about this transportation, it is quieter, it is more efficient, it's healthier. It's cleaner and it's cooler. Look at those things and look at what they can do, not only for this city, but recharging our entire state. We have an issue we need to face and it's called climate change. 
It is affecting our economy. It is affecting the severity of the storms that we are experiencing. And as we move forward with technology, we can play a role not only in fighting climate change, but making us healthier, protecting our environment, and creating jobs. I wanted to be here today because it is in line with my vision for our state. Because back in October, I signed an executive order to pull together our local, state, and federal officials in North Carolina to make sure we have cleaner, more efficient energy in our future. And my executive order set the goal that North Carolina will reduce its greenhouse gases by 40% by the year 2025. We can do that by creating even more jobs in the clean energy and renewable sector and by shifting to more energy efficient and electric vehicles on our highway. And the order also directs our State Department of Transportation and our state government to begin using electric vehicles in our transportation in order to help us meet this energy efficient goal and this significant reduction of greenhouse gases. It makes so much sense. And in fact, as you know about the big Volkswagen settlement where North Carolina is going to get millions of dollars, we have a plan in place where we're going to use a significant amount of, the, amount of that money to put charging stations across our state to make the use of electric vehicles all across North Carolina more inviting. Because folks, this is smarter, this is the way of the future, and it is a way for us to make sure we create better paying jobs in North Carolina and become healthier and cleaner while we're doing it. I'm proud to be here today and I'm excited that we're going to continue to work together to make a North Carolina that works for everyone and we're going to be at the cutting edge. Thank you Greensboro for what you're doing. Before we move to our ribbon cutting, uh, we'd like to give our congressional representatives an opportunity. I understand there's perhaps a letter from uh, the senator that you'd like to read, and then Congressman Walker, if you'd like to say a few things. Thank you, Congressman Walker, uh, Governor Cooper, Mayor Vaughn, and uh, other dignitaries gathered here today. My name is Mike Finley. I'm the eyes and ears of Senator Richard Burr in 25 counties of Northwest North Carolina, including Guilford, and I'm pleased to be here today. And I have a letter from the Senator addressed to the Greensboro Transportation Authority. Dear friends, thank you for the invitation to join you today to participate in the ribbon cutting ceremony for Greensboro's electric bus deployment. I regret that my schedule has kept me from being with you to participate in this great event. I want to congratulate the city of Greensboro on being the first in the state to deploy electric buses. These buses will save the city millions of dollars over their lifetime. I know that the city has made a commitment to the environmental health of its citizens, and these buses will further ensure that that goal is met. I'm honored that my office has been able to play a small role in helping secure funding for this project. Again, I commend you all for this achievement, and I hope they'll be able to visit with you soon. Please feel free to contact my office directly if there's ever anything that I can do for you. Sincerely, Richard Burr, United States Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Adam and Ken, for allowing us to participate today. Uh, it's great to be on stage with Bishop Pierce, Mayor Vaughn, certainly Governor Cooper, uh, Mike Fox, David. Um, 
But one person we haven't mentioned today that I know I can tell you from the federal side of things that is a warrior or was a warrior uh, for Greensboro, now doing it in the private sector, is Jim Westmoreland. And I want to say thank you so much for all your hard work over the years, Jim. Appreciate that. When I think of public transportation, I was thinking on the way over here today, the first thought or the first picture that came to my mind was the, uh, the sweet young lady uh, that had special needs that always attended our church uh, where I was pastor here in Greensboro, and she always used public transportation. Now, I haven't been a pastor for about five years. The only thing that's really changed is my language and my beverage choice, but if you're not Baptist, that probably doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, sorry about that, Pastor Pierce. I, that is a, I'm just kidding with you there. So, uh, but, uh, but, but I think of it so many times as far as electric buses. Uh, with Senator Burr and I, we fly together on Mondays going to Washington, D.C. Now, uh, for those of you that have had the luxury to fly from Greensboro to D.C.A., there's a gate called 35X. Uh, when you get uh, to 35X, there's, there's no gate waiting for you. You fly and land on the tarmac. Uh, and on that tarmac is a nice diesel bus waiting for you in 90-degree weather many times. And I don't care what party affiliation you are, uh, after breathing those diesel fumes, you're thinking an electric bus would be very nice right now. Um, but it is a privilege today to speak just for a second and talk about the innovation that Greensboro once again is leading the way. Uh, Mayor Vaughn, you and your team have, uh, have jumped out there and said, we can be first, we can make this happen, uh, and I applaud you for that. Let me also, in concluding here today, uh, mention Mike Fox, and not just for his work specifically in this area, but if you look at the impact that our state has gone through to the different tropical storms, the hurricanes, tornado even here in Greensboro, the DOT has stepped up and Mike Fox has led the way in doing so. So we want to acknowledge you as well as the mayor and on this very special occasion. God bless you. Thanks for allowing us to be here today. One, two, three. Yeah.